In this video I'm going to be reviewing and testing out the KitchenAid 13 cup food processor, so let's get started. So I bought the 13 cup food processor to replace uh, three of the things that I already have. So I wanted to replace the shredder and slicer attachments that I use with my KitchenAid stand mixer. I use my KitchenAid stand mixer mostly for dough. And I also wanted to replace my KitchenAid 5 cup food chopper. So let's see how well the 13 cup food processor does and uh, I'll decide on whether I'm going to replace these things or just stick with what I have. In my previous video I showed you the features and how to assemble the KitchenAid 13 cup food processor. So I'll leave a link to that video here and also in the description if you guys want to watch that. When you're ready to use the food processor, always insert these two parts first, the upper drive adapter and the lower drive adapter. And I'll start off with the dough blade, pop it into the work bowl on the drive adapters. First I'm going to add half of my water from my recipe, then I'm going to add some salt, some sugar, some oil, add in the flour, and then finally the yeast, and put it on low speed. And then slowly, slowly, I'm going to add the remaining water. But I'm only going to add very little at a time until the dough forms into a nice ball. And the reason I like to start with water first is when the dough is forming, the flour and the water gets blended very well. And I don't need to go back and forth adjusting the water and the flour. So I'm just going to very, very slowly add my water until it's formed into a nice ball and you can see that there's no flour stuck at the edge of the bowl either. So it's doing a really good job kneading the dough. However you do, I don't know if you can notice, but the machine is starting to slide a little bit on the counter from the force of the dough uh, once it's formed into a ball. So I'm just gonna check on the dough to see if it needs any more water, but that looks perfect. I don't think I need to add any more water, but I am just gonna let it knead a little bit more just to make it a bit more smoother. And you can see that the machine is vibrating quite a bit now and I have to hold it a little because I'm worried it's just going to start sliding. So whatever you do, you definitely don't want to keep it to the edge of your counter. So you can see how it's just cleaned up all the dough from the side of the bowl as well. And just to show you just how nice that dough is. Really nice, perfect for my pizza. Just the right consistency. So now I'm just gonna seal this up into a bowl and let it rise. And just to give you an idea, if I show you by starting off with the flour first, and then if I add the water, you'll notice how the flour gets stuck to the edge of the bowl here. And you're going to keep on adding water until all the flour gets wiped off from the sides of the bowl and what's going to happen is because you see all this flour on the edge you're going to be tempted to just keep on adding more water assuming that there is not enough water in there and what's going to happen is you're just going to end up with a sticky mess so i've added way too much water now and there's still quite a bit of flour left here at the edge of the bowl if you can see and i'm just really tempted to keep on adding water to wipe all of this flour away from the bowl. So this is why I like to start off with the water first inside the bowl and then add the flour and uh, trust me that's just something that I always prefer to do and it's always worked out better for me or otherwise whatever works for you. And you can see that it's just a sticky mess and now I'm just going to have to add more flour to it. Next I'll use the multi-purpose blade and I'm going to pop in some tomatoes sliced into quarters put it on high speed and look at that beautiful nice tomato puree and you can just make batches of this and freeze it and just use it whenever you need to also with the multi-purpose blade you can do harder things like nuts 
So here I'm doing some almonds on high speed. And they chopped really nicely. I think I only found just the one piece here which was a little big, but look at that, beautifully chopped. Next I'm going to pop in the dicing kit. So I'm just going to dice some baby cucumbers here and they should fit nicely into this small feed tube. If I put them into the medium sized feed tube you'll see that they'll just wobble around a little bit. So it's better to use the small feed tube. So get the motor started and then just pop them through the feed tube and they should just dice through. Let's open up the dicing kit and take a look and there's not a lot of cucumbers on top so anything that's there you, you can just push through using the clean out tool. I think cucumbers will always turn out the best in here. Next I also did some red peppers. Let's open it up and see. You can see on top that there were a couple of chunky pieces that didn't go through. We're just going to use the dicing kit cleaning tool to just push it through. Did a really good job of dicing up the red pepper here. Just a couple of big pieces like I mentioned. Next I diced some tomatoes. Feed them through the feeding tube. Again with the tomatoes I'm just getting all the skin stuck at the top here but other than that it's all gone through very nicely and the tomatoes came out really nicely diced. No mush at all. The tomatoes probably need to be a little bit firm as well. Next I did some red onions and uh, just use the food pusher to push any remaining food in through. The onions left quite a bit of chunky pieces behind on top here, maybe because they're slightly harder. You can't really use the cleaning tool to push the onions through so you'll just have to chop them up by hand I guess. But you know overall it did a really good job dicing. There are going to be a couple of big pieces but I have a feeling that KitchenAid was anticipating that, that's why they gave the clean out tool. Next I diced some potatoes but if you notice that as I was dicing it the machine started to move a little on the counter even though the machine does have some rubber feet um, you do want to make sure that you don't have it too close to the edge of your counter in case it falls off. Let's open it up and there is quite a bit of potato left on top and I'm not going to be able to push it through so I'm just going to pick them out. But overall the potatoes diced really well and they'll make some nice hash browns. Next I use the slicing disc. I'm gonna slice some potatoes, turn it on to zero, the thinnest slice. And I showed this in my previous video but I'll just show you guys very quickly here the results. You will always end up with a few pieces on top of the blade. So this is the last piece and it just didn't cut through. But overall it sliced it really well and I did do one of every size and just to show you here there are seven sizes to choose from so zero one two three four five six Next I use the shredding disc and I put it on the medium shred to do some cheese and I just have my cheese cut here into rectangles. Get the motor started on high and then I'm going to use the food pusher to push the cheese through and it does shred really nicely but it did trap a lot of cheese underneath the lid of the work bowl and because the cheese was gathering underneath the lid it was giving me a bit of pushback from the feed tube so you can see that it's starting to push the feed tube upwards and here's all the cheese that's gathered underneath. 
So I had to scoop all of that out. So you can see that I was only able to get two blocks of cheese done before I had to remove the whole lid and scoop out all the cheese from it. Which is a little disappointing because this is one of the biggest reasons why I bought this food processor. The cheese did shred nicely, it's just going to take a lot of work to do it. And I'll be honest, I don't think it's going to make a difference if you freeze the cheese first. Alright guys, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to check out all my other videos and I hope to catch you in my next video.